Hey guys, almost by definition, an 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight color RGB cube is an insane project. I mean, have you seen this one by Kevin Dara? He did a great job with the project and documenting it and explaining it, but it is just insane. <laughs> I mean, take a look at all these wires. But he had no choice because we have so many LEDs. So that is 8 LEDs times 8 LEDs times 8 LEDs. That's 512 LEDs, and each of them contains three colors, so that's times three. That is over 1,500 LEDs. And as you know, the Arduino doesn't have 1,500 I.O. pins, so he had to use all these shift registers down here on these boards. When I saw this a couple of years ago, I said, no, thank you, I'm not that insane yet. And then I discover... <laughs> these are called NeoPixels. Their actual part number is WS2812B. There are also newer, faster, and smaller versions. For those of you interested, I'll put a link to them in the YouTube description. As you saw in the previous episode, each one of these contains three LEDs. And they have four pins. So instinctively, you might think that they have one common ground and three positives, one for each of the LEDs. However, they're much smarter than that. These two pins are for power, five volts and ground. This one is data in from the Arduino, and this last pin is data out going to the next LED. This makes chaining them in a string really easy. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly how you normally would buy these LEDs. You can get them as flexible strips, sometimes with adhesive backing already, on a PCB, or even a circular PCB. You would connect the input of the first LED to the Arduino and the subsequent LEDs have been pre-soldered, so the output of the first LED will go to the end of the second LED, out to in, out to in, and so on and so forth. Although technically they're not shift registers, you could think of them as LEDs with a built-in shift register. So the Arduino would send all the LED states sequentially for all these LEDs through just one pin. Since I bought these as discrete unsoldered LEDs, I had to solder them myself before I could try them out on a breadboard. My original idea was to solder them onto a perf board, but in the end it is actually simpler to just solder the lead directly onto the pads. There are several libraries out there for these NeoPixels. I'll put their links in the YouTube description. If you know of other NeoPixel libraries, please share them in the comments. Thanks! This is the awesome thing about the Arduino. No matter what you're trying to hook up to it, Chances are someone already written a library for it. I decided to use the one called FastLED because it has the word fast in its name. <laughs> so thanks to Daniel Garcia, using NeoPixels is incredibly easy. Let me show you. Of course the first thing we need to do is to include the library. Then we'll create an array to represent our 8 LEDs. Define the one Arduino pin that we are going to use to control all these LEDs. In setup, we tell the library what kind of LEDs we have. We have NeoPixels, our data pin, the LED array, and how many LEDs we have. And that's it, we're ready to play. To start with, let's just get a couple of the LEDs to turn on some colors. Let's set the first one to red, second one to green, and the third one to blue. Okay, while well, we're waiting for it to compile, let's review the circuit here. Here's the data pin, the only data pin, D3, going into the input of the first LED through this 100 ohm resistor. The output of the first LED, is going to the input of the second LED, output of that goes to the third, and so on and so forth. And that's the whole circuit. We're driving all these LEDs with no shift registers and just one Arduino pin. Pretty amazing. Because each of these contains three LED and they could be all on at the same time, I believe the maximum current is like 60 milliamps. So all these adds up. So I power them separately using this power bank. And don't forget the common ground if you do this. Okay, it's uploading now. Hmm, it's not working. Oh, we forgot to tell it to send the data. So all we did was to set the array that is basically in memory here, but we never tell the library to send it to these LEDs. To do that, we need to call the show method of the fast LED library. So it's uploading. And, ta-da! I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see the colors better. It's really hard to capture the true color of these LEDs in the video. But I think you could see that, you know, the first element of the array is actually red, the second element is green, and the third one is blue. Let's see what we could do about making an animation instead of a static color. 
Not too bad for just a few lines of code. So basically, we have two loops. There's this one over here, and then there's the second one over here. And so the first loop goes through 0 through 7, setting the LEDs to blue, display it, and then wait a little bit before setting the next one to blue. So by the time we're done, all of them will be blue. And this one is exactly backward, setting LED sub 7, which is the last one, to black, and doing that backward now, so 7, 6, 5, etc., until we hit 0. And another thing I did was I changed the speed. When it's going up, I want it to go up really fast. So that's the 30 right here. And when it's going down, I want it to go slower so it can like die down. So that's why this is 100 over here. And then I put a little delay so there's like a little space before you start doing it again. And that's all it is. Just two simple loops. But the same idea applies whether you have 8 LEDs or 500 LEDs. Those ping pong balls, they're still not here from China. But speaking of ping pong balls, thanks to those of you who warned me about the flammability of ping pong balls. I'll be sure to test them when they get here from China. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.